Sonic Boom Episode 7, Unlucky Knuckles. He's unlucky already, isn't he? We start out with Knuckles boasting about his ability to beat Sonic in a game of golf ball. Fortunately, Sonic is just as exasperated as I am with it. I don't know why this show can't have Knuckles, like, regularly beat Sonic in whatever he's competing against him with. What's the point of having them have a rivalry if Sonic's always gonna win? It's not really about making Sonic look cool, because anyone would look cool compared to Buffles. Tails flips a coin and gets heads, and Sonic gets a hole-in-one ridiculously far away, and somehow the hole bounces back up to right beside him. I'd expect Knuckles to be better at any particular sport than Sonic, especially since he's muscular in the show. But somehow Sonic the Creator's pet is so much better at it that Knuckles does nothing but misses golf balls. It makes sense that someone would struggle at golf, because you have to swing in a very specific way based on the wind and distance, and even whether you're on grass or sand, because sand makes it not go as far for some reason. Because Knuckles is pacing back and forth because of his bad luck, Amy complains about him killing the grass. I guess she was joking, because why would she think that's actually going to happen? And Knuckles complains because he keeps losing to Sonic in competition somehow. Six wonders if he can burn through his losing streak to shift his luck back to good luck. Never put her in a casino. It's interesting to see her as superstitious, but since conspiracy theory belief isn't any more stupid than religious belief, it makes sense that she'd be superstitious too. Either way, she has faith in something unscientific. Knuckles gets blasted into a tree by a cannon, and gets threatened by bees. I wonder if this episode is written by someone who hates Knuckles and wants to make him as miserable as he possibly can. Knuckles even says he has a punctured lung! Well, he pathetically tries to tough talk in front of Sonic. What kind of... That is so dark! That is like the darkest thing that's happened to Knuckles since he was stabbed in the other M comic. A punctured lung? And that doesn't have any consequences past this episode, apparently. I feel like Knuckles is really not meant to be portrayed as completely pathetic, especially when trying to be a rival to Sonic. He wasn't like this in Sonic 3. In Archie and Underground, he was basically Sonic's equal when fighting against them. And even in SDC, Sonic thought that he just barely won against them. This isn't even a clever parody, because it doesn't mock him based on how he actually is. It just artificially gives him an IQ of zero. So, it's less like a clever parody of Knuckles, and more like it's a bad fanfiction that completely mocks Knuckles by someone who hates him. Like, a clever parody of Knuckles would be parodying more than just his stupidity, which is only something that happens a few times. Then Eggman tries to shoot lasers a bunch, just to end up tripping. And inexplicably, from sheer coincidence, Orbot says that there's a shift of the luck balance in the universe. It's a fantasy universe, so I immediately assumed it was true right away. How would he even know where to begin to do research to learn about a luck balance of the universe? Wouldn't he be programmed to not think like that? Eggman's robots wouldn't be programmed to be superstitious. Sonic and Knuckles go to an orange mountainous canyon, where there's tons of falling fire and boulders, like flame core, and Knuckles gets hit by a boulder which somehow doesn't kill him, or even permanently injure him. Is this AOSDH? Again, over-the-top slapstick would make more sense for a hand-drawn animated show, but not for a CG show, which by definition feels more realistic. Then Eggman plans on attacking Sonic because he's luckier now, even though if he was luckier, he'd succeed in killing them all. Or if he doesn't want to actually do that, the luckiest he could get is that he permanently injures them and takes over the world. So that won't happen either. So... Huh? Sonic asks Knuckles for a rematch in golf. Knuckles says the ground is rumbling. And the bulk is knocked away by the Eggmobile, which blasts lasers at a village and destroys a house. And... You'd think that something competent of Eggman would be that he would then gather the materials of the house to benefit off it. Like, why else would he think he could gain something in destroying houses? If Eggman was really so lucky, he'd kill them. Well, maybe he's intentionally luring Sonic over to him. Because if he wanted to succeed at invading a village, he'd invade a village that Sonic doesn't live near. If he's really so lucky, he'd be lucky enough to not be an idiot. 
Like, Sonic and his friends never go out of their way to foil Eggman's plans. They don't do research on what he's doing by watching the news or something. Since Eggman flies away because Knuckles showed up, Sonic snarks that since Knuckles is so unlucky and does nothing but inconvenience his team, he might as well join Eggman and make it official. I really wish this was done with Antoine and Sad AM. That's how the writing would be if the writer had self-awareness. And Sonic tells Amy to see how things go. So Knuckles' bad luck would make things go horribly for Eggman. Wait, so was the first issue of the Sonic Boom comic written after this episode? It wouldn't surprise me if, instead, it wasn't original when the comic did it. Somehow Eggman's giant robot destroys itself. And Knuckles complains that his bad luck follows him wherever he goes. And Sonic reveals that he has sent Knuckles on a secret mission for them. And I'm surprised that already Sonic and his friends are telling Knuckles what the real effect of his double agentness was. Something heavy falls on Tails, and somehow that's the end of the episode. He doesn't have to go to the hospital or anything. Wow. They had the idea of Knuckles sabotaging Eggman with his bad luck, and they wasted it just like that. I don't know how Eggman's robot malfunctioned in the first place, scientifically speaking. Let alone how it could have anything to do with Knuckles showing up after it was already invented. And it happened so fast and underwhelmingly that it didn't have an impact. If this was their idea, they should have had Knuckles' bad luck cost Eggman like four times, not one. Not that it would be any different from how Eggman's days normally go. They should have cut more padding out of the episode to make room for that. This is a significant idea, and it's over just like that. Knuckles hasn't been shown that his bad luck streak is over yet. It'd be fun if Knuckles explained that he likes hanging out with his friends a lot more than being with Eggman all day, so giving Eggman even more bad luck than he already does isn't worth being lonely and annoyed by him. Eggman having good luck could have been the perfect opportunity to have him take over a village finally, and show us how Boom Eggman would be as a ruler. Guess not! Instead, he acts no differently than he always does when they build up to him being more menacing. I loved the idea of the fact that Knuckles had a bad luck streak because in the games he does, so they're being self-aware of that and lampshading it, and without breaking the fourth wall. So that's how you do self-awareness right. But sadly, it was just an excuse to humiliate Knuckles more than usual without provoking. And I don't even remember how he was humiliated other than losing at golf a lot and getting shot into a tree from a cannon. I wish we saw a lot more of Eggman getting bad luck because of Knuckles. It was shocking that the episode ended there. Like, already Sonic and his friends reunited with Knuckles, and they were seen after Sonic told them to join Eggman. So while it had a lot of potential, it missed all of it. Knuckles never became lucky from all that bad luck being spent, even though Eggman apparently did, after, uh, playing laser tag, I guess. It was really underwhelming. It'd make more sense if his bad luck streak was broken from losing to Sonic again. Like, it'd feel like it was inevitable and was built up to you since the beginning. Instead, his good luck streak is stopped before it could even begin. You know the episode's bad when a fan can watch the thing and immediately think of how it should have been instead. Sonic Boom Episode 7-2, The Meteor. We start out with the heroes having a campfire at night, enjoying a meteor shower. And Amy, for some reason, asks what Tails is doing when he's watching the sky. Then one of the meteors crashes, and the heroes see a shining stone on it. It turns out Eggman first discovered it and calls Dibs. It was actually amusing when Eggman mocked Sonic, saying, Oh, he doesn't respect Dibs. Too bad the entire back and forth between them was a painfully long, unfunny gag. They're mortal enemies, they wouldn't waste so much time on this. They both touch the shiny stone at once, saying Dibs for no reason. And then Sonic wakes up and is in Eggman's body. I assumed he'd be in the situation the minute he woke up in Eggman's face with us only seeing from his point of view. This plot was already done in the Sonic X comic, and it seemed more believable there. He's simply surprised to find things out, rather than horrifying demanding the robots out of the room. Dumb. I was really relieved that they didn't apply Sonic's voice to Eggman's body and vice versa. That'd be dumb and ruin the entire episode. It was entertaining to see Eggman in Sonic's body relaxing in a hammock, and then saying that he's gonna play it cool before laughing maniacally. I love seeing Sonic's body acting cartoonishly evil. It was amusing to see him talk like this. He plans on destroying Sonic's friends, and then runs into the wall immediately. If this was the X comic, he'd spend the entire story doing this over and over again. I have no idea why Sonic is trying to tell Orbot and Cubot that he's Sonic. Like, really? 
He didn't do this in the X comic for a reason. He tries to be physically active to prove he's Sonic, which shouldn't be something he'd expect to work. Of course, he's winded and wants Tails' help because of it. Naturally, Eggman's already gotten used to being in Sonic's body. Because he's in Sonic's body, go figure. So he moves around in his ball form. This is already better done than the X comic. Because Sonic says he appreciates Orbot and Cubot for taking him to the Eggmobile, this is the thing that makes them suspicious that he's not Eggman. But Cubot talks like he doesn't know that he's Sonic. It was amusing that Sonic says he'll have to destroy some of the heroes tomorrow because of their schedule. But still, there's no way he would have just wasted time playing video games with Knuckles when immediately his plan was to destroy the heroes with his powers. At least when Scourge replaced Sonic, he didn't immediately start talking about trying to destroy the heroes, which would have made it especially glaring that he never even tried to do that. Never even tried to destroy Knothole. While well, here, how has he not done it already if he's evil enough to want to do that in the first place? Sonic shows up trying to warn the heroes what's going on, and Eggman makes it obvious that he's Eggman like Sonic said, because he says Eggman's plans are genius, and the heroes laugh. And then he says the heroes are laughing because they're jealous of Eggman. Eggman throws a pie at his face and makes me smile because he says in a very whiny voice that Eggman threw a pie at him. So the heroes totally buy it despite the awful acting, and they all go after Eggman's body directly. This causes Sonic to run away because he was too stupid to have Eggmobile be too high up in the air for the heroes to be unable to try to attack him. So Orbot and Cubot use a magnet to grab Eggman's body and fly him home. I guess he has some iron in his clothes. Like, this this whole plot is taken a lot less seriously than it was in the Sonic X comic. But it made sense for it to be taken seriously in the X comic. It made sense for Sonic to be horrified. Then a giant mecha pushes down some trees on its way to Sonic's body and goes after him. Sonic wouldn't approve of that. That's unnecessary. He's supposed to be a nature lover. For some reason, Orbot and Cuba are programmed to only obey orders after being threatened. So Orbot outright tells Sonic to threaten him for some reason. Huh? The heroes fight robots, as I seriously wonder why Sonic sent robots after his friends. I mean, of course he'd know that they could survive, but come on. Eventually, we see Eggman's body on top of Sonic's body. I guess because one of the robots knocked him over. Meanwhile, Tails watches some tiny animals switch bodies on the duel, and for fuck's sake, he wouldn't have figured out they had switched brains just based on watching that! For fuck's sake! Ugh. It would have made a lot more sense if the heroes had gotten suspicious from Eggman's obvious dialogue, since Sonic was clearly giving the heroes an explanation for it. Sonic threatens Eggman to sacrifice him to super speed by threatening to cut his mustache with a pair of scissors. So, somehow, because he values the appearance of a body he doesn't have anymore, more than his best possible shot at killing the heroes, Eggman rushes at Sonic, and we unfortunately have a time skip right as they switch bodies. Where we see Sonic playing volleyball, and Eggman spy on him from his base. I was confused at what Orbo and Cubot were laughing at, because he didn't look that different. I expected the entire half of his mustache to be cut off. It was oddly delightful to hear these abused robot psychics actually giggling, though. I could listen to Orbot laughing all day. Not literally, but it's such a delightful sound. So, what happened to that meteor after this episode? A satisfying ending would be Tails flying out to the middle of the ocean, throwing it into it. Which he must have done, or else Eggman would have made a plan to repeat this entire plot. This episode impressed me by having the concept of Sonic and Eggman switch bodies. Though it was with the magic stone Deus Ex Machina meteor that came out of nowhere to have a plot around it. Not because of an invention Eggman made, where we could have assumed he spent a long time building it beforehand. Although if I had to choose, it does make much more sense that this body switching would be because of a magic stone. Because how the hell do you make a scientific invention that does that? So it's a Genesis Wave problem. It's just that this magic stone has no reason to exist. It's not called a Chaos Crystal. Am I supposed to assume it is, and that's just one of the unique powers of one of them? What's the point of having a Sonic cartoon based off Sonic Boom if you're not going to have the Chaos Crystals in it? It's like having a Sonic continuity where there's no robots in it. Like, the very idea of having a plot that starts out because of a magical thing, Deus Ex Machina, that just comes out of nowhere. 
Like, that's a plot that I would be embarrassed to write. That I would consider at first, but wouldn't want to do because I feel self-conscious about how obviously contrived and easy it would be. Anyways, the only reason it's remotely believable that Eggman didn't immediately kill all the heroes like he planned to was because it's Boom Eggman. There's much more emphasis on his personality in the show. On the fact that he's, like, a relatable person. He's, he's not just a living, breathing antagonist machine who only exists for the sake of inconveniencing the heroes, for the sake of having a plot. Like, he actually seems to do stuff for the same reason that a person would. Like, of course he would cut in line. That's something that you would do if you were a bad guy. So, it does make sense that someone who's childish and fun-loving and vain at his core would be easily distracted by a video game, and thus waste most of his time doing that. Because he would want to prove to Knuckles that he could beat him in a video game. It's like, it's his ego taking over, distracting him. Even though he's in Sonic's body, it doesn't matter how powerful his body is because it can't save him from his own personality. So Knuckles was actually really useful for once because he saved his friends' lives with that fighting game. It seemed threatening of Eggman that he immediately planned on destroying the heroes with Sonic's body. While in the X comic, literally all Eggman did was have the heroes be his servants, and didn't even consider hurting them. It's surprising that Boom Eggman was actually planning on being the eviler one then. But when you consider that Boom Eggman doesn't just destroy the heroes' homes in their sleeps with a missile, you start to realize that he doesn't really care about destroying them like he thinks he does. Because if he really cared about that, he would have already won. He really just cares about beating him in a way that's challenging so that he can brag about it and feel proud of it. If he was all about killing them, then he wouldn't have gotten distracted by a video game so easily. He would have just killed Knuckles and be done with it. It's like how you want to beat a hard video game, but you could just use an action replay. But dropping a missile in a Sonic's house when he's asleep, that would be the action replay to him. It could be considered cheating. If he really cared about just destroying the heroes, he would have destroyed them when they were laughing at him, which you'd expect Eggman to do since he's constantly getting enraged at being mocked. So realistically, the episode would have ended there, in a very dark and gruesome ending that they'd immediately have to reveal was all just a dream or alternate universe, because come on. I was impressed that Eggman figured it out and adjusted to Sonic's speed in the first place. Instead of wasting the entire concept of the plot running into things, we have a brief time skip where in the next scene, he's mastered Sonic's powers. Which makes more sense to me since he's in Sonic's body, and thus part of Sonic's powers would be knowing how to handle them. But that doesn't change the fact that the idea of this whole plot was mostly wasted, because all Eggman does is play a video game, which Sonic would have done anyways. Only his dialogue was different. In fact, I think you could watch the episode in another language without understanding any of the dialogue, and I have no idea that they even switch bodies. As long as you skip the scene where Sonic discovered that he was in Eggman's body. If you skip that scene, you could watch the episode not understanding the dialogue, and you wouldn't think Sonic was acting any different. That's how little of a difference it made. I loved that Eggman was making Sonic's body deliver cheesy, villainous dialogue. I couldn't get enough of that. And Sonic and Eggman aren't really that different. I mean, they're they're both immature because, like, they both called dibs and argued over calling dibs. It was weird to see Sonic just as immature as Eggman, when Eggman's supposed to be... Well, I guess they would be just as immature as each other, because Sonic is a teenager. It was so amusing seeing Sonic say he planned on destroying the heroes and laughing maniacally, which Scourge never did. And it was also amusing seeing him act awkward because he's Eggman and not Sonic. It also really drives the point home that Scourge isn't nearly as evil as Flynn thought he was, because when he impersonated Sonic, it's not like his first and only priority was to destroy the heroes. He tried to do everything but that. In fact, he never even planned to destroy Knot Hole, or else he would have immediately done it. That's how unevil he was. But Eggman immediately planned on trying to destroy the heroes. It's just hard to believe that after this video game ended, he didn't immediately start fighting them trying to do that. And that's the biggest missed opportunity with this episode, and the biggest thing about it that's lame. We should have seen the concept of Sonic fighting his friends. 
Amy could fight him off with her hammer. And Eggman could justify that while he could spin Ash through them, that looked too gruesome for him to stomach. And since this is Boom Eggman, it'd be believable that he'd be like that. It's not like he's ever... Well, he has sent spikes after them. He has sent spiked machines after them. Like, he could be explained to be holding back, merely using his spin dash as a ball to smack at them. Still though, you'd think he'd just smack at them with that spin dash ball at over 600 miles per hour and immediately kill all of them the minute Sonic got chased away by his friends. It would've made more sense that he didn't do that if, after Sonic was chased away, instead of a narrative damaging time skip, we saw Knuckles say to Eggman that he wants to play some more video games with them. So that would be a distraction for him, explaining why he's sparing him for now. It just barely makes sense. It just barely manages to work. Because realistically, if Eggman got Sonic's body, he just uses overpowered powers to kill the heroes. So that's an insanely dark and overpowered concept for the villain. But it's also one that's begging to be used. So to avoid the darkness of us actually seeing him succeed, we have him distracted by a video game instead. I just feel like this episode should have been longer. I wanted to see a wider variety of things Eggman would be doing in Sonic's body. I wanted to hear a lot more dialogue from him. And to be fair, the concept of body switching was so weird now left field that I could understand the heroes not instantly assuming that it's Eggman and Sonic's body just because Sonic's talking weirdly. But Styx would assume that. That's another missed opportunity. Why didn't Styx figure him out? That's something we could have seen if we saw an entire 30 minute episode of him being Sonic, instead of just an 11 minute one. I couldn't get enough of Boom Eggman awkwardly pretending to be Sonic. I wanted to see more of this. I didn't get enough of it from the, from the X comic. But instead the story ends, because Sonic proves Eggman values his mustache more than keeping Sonic's body and killing the heroes, which is obviously far more valuable to him. Come on, the story ended way too quickly. We didn't really get to see Sonic experience life as Robotnik. We saw him in his space with his robots. We saw him show that he appreciates Orbot and Cubot, but there could have been a sad moment where the civilians mistreated him in the grocery store because they think he's Eggman. But realistically, why would Sonic ever go out in public in Eggman's body? So that couldn't have happened, and I'd hate it anyways. So his side of the story would always be really boring, he'd just do nothing all day. Well, he could order Orbot and Cubot to dismantle everything in Eggman's lab. Why the hell didn't we see him do that? What an idiot. It was Sonic's body side of the story that really had potential. We didn't even get to see Eggman go to Medburger. He just did one thing. It did make sense that the heroes would interpret his praise of Eggman as sarcastic joking, because that would be in character of Sonic. And that's the only way his dialogue would make sense for Sonic. So they didn't end up being so gullible that the whole story felt forced. I mean, it was forced because it was caused by a lazy diabolic ex machina, but still. The heroes had never been introduced to the idea that body switching could even happen. So only Styx would ever come to that conclusion. The only way Eggman talked differently and acted differently in front of them was that he praised Eggman and told the heroes to stop insulting him. And that could just be interpreted as Sonic's going soft on him because he's a hero and that nice of a guy. So if anything, that could be the opposite of proving he's the evil Eggman. I wish that was told to us as the explanation for why I didn't immediately give the game away with that. It reflects badly on Sonic when, after Eggman took over his body, instead of immediately going on a crime spree ruining his reputation, Eggman acted just like him, doing literally nothing different other than hit himself with a pie to frame him. Actually, he was more entertaining than him because he was full of eagerness and positive energy. While Boom Sonic tends to be a bored, tired grump, a sarcastic audience surrogate. It's sad that Boom Eggman in Sonic's body was being more like how you'd expect Sonic to be normally. A fun-loving, cheerful person. But yeah, it was forced that not only did Eggman never even attack the heroes in all that time, just to force it to not be dark, but he also never went on a crime spree attacking the village and stealing stuff. What the hell was the point then? Skirsch didn't do that to Not Hole either. Which really goes to show you how like they are in the not that evil department. A really under-talked about aspect of Scourge's character. This concept would have logically had nothing but dark results. But since this is a forced comedy show, we aren't allowed to see any of that. Not even in a what-if scenario that gets undone with time travel or alternate universe reveal. And what would have still been worth it to see Sonic talking like Eggman? The episode wasn't nearly long enough to give us enough of that. 
especially because it wasted precious time on Sonic. I'm glad this episode's title didn't spoil the actual plot. I was expecting a cliché story where a meteor almost hits the world. That comes later. So they used up the obvious title for that plot here. This episode could have been titled like anything. Like it could have been like the body switching magical stone. It didn't have to be a meteor.